Hello, I'm Michael Simkin, and today I'm interviewing Alex Sternick. Alex is an international humor coach who works with people to improve their self-acceptance. He's also a clinical nutritionist and is an expert and widely recognized practitioner in the art of nonsense and laughter therapy. Alex is the man behind laughter yoga clubs in Israel. He began his laughter journey in India in 2003, where he worked with terminally ill patients. Subsequently, he's practiced in Ethiopia as a laughter therapist and as a nutritionist in the United States with Save the Children. Hello, Alex. Hello, my dear. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, thanks, and delighted to be with you here today. Um, Thank you so much for the invitation. My pleasure. <laughs> Let's get straight down to business with a somewhat strange question. What is laughter? Woo! <laughs> it makes me laugh, you see. So um, there are a few definitions of laughter. And let's, let's start with the more shallow or simple ones. So laughter is a gateway. It's the ability of one to express these sounds of laughter and vibrations from the body. Like if you, if you listen to a good comedy or joke, or you do laughter yoga exercises, which is a method that helps people to laugh as a form of exercise, body exercise, then you express laughter, you feel better because of endorphins released in the bloodstream, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. Um, but then after some time, the level of endorphins is getting down and you're back to your miserable life. This is about aerobic laughter. It's very, very uh, impermanent. And also um, you cannot fake laughter forever. You can do it for a while. And uh, it, on those days that you feel a little bit gloomy or maybe heavily gloomy and very uh, depressed and very sad, no fake laughter is going to help you. So even if you laugh, it will be like, uh, 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 because it doesn't come from the heart. So the aerobic physical laughter may help you at times. Sometimes it can boost your mood. It can boost your endorphins, but it doesn't work for 100%. And I can tell you uh, as a, myself as a testimonial, because I have been teaching laughter yoga from 2003, approximately to 2015, 16, it's not enough. It's a gateway. Now, if you listen to a joke, if you listen to a comedy, you will laugh for 20, 30 seconds, and you are, a pa you are the passive here. You, you, you depend on something external to help you to express your laughter. But if you don't understand the jokes, there is a problem. But now let's go deeper. And if we go deeper, for me, the word laughter is very related with the Hebrew definition. In Hebrew, we have the word tzchok, and for our listeners who don't know Hebrew, I guess most of them, the word tzchok, the word laughter in Hebrew means the ability of someone to get out of his limitations, laws, and rules. See, to get out beyond the limitations, the linear, the mental limitations, the rules and the laws. So you can contradict your uh, belief system and then set yourself free. This is for me laughter. In aerobic laughter, when you explode from laughter, <laughs> for one second, you don't think. You are going beyond thinking, beyond the mental. But I want to have it as a mindset. I want to help someone in his mindset, in his way of living to live beyond the rules, beyond the laws, beyond the limitation, which has been, have been imposed on us by society, by governments, by pharmaceutical companies, by anyone who is not you. 
Anyone who is not you and impose on you those rules and you behave in this cage, limited, I want to help you to go beyond, to cross beyond this limitation. Then you can laugh. Second thing, uh, the ability of a person to laugh also depends on his capacity to meet, face, and befriend at will with all different emotions on the spectrum, like sadness, like shame, like pain, like fear, etc. Face them, play with them at will, let them pass away. This is real laughter, this is real happiness. Be there courageously, embrace all the emotions, then you can laugh. Beautiful. Um, Thank you so much. So what is humor drama? Oh, that's a question. So um, humor drama, uh, uh, paradoxically or not, uh, started uh, to develop in the 70s in Germany, uh, where uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Michael Tietze, who is a, a clinical psychologist and logotherapist, he went to Vienna to, to, to study with Dr. Viktor Frankl, who is the father of logotherapy. One of the uh, 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 things uh, uh, used in logotherapy is called paradoxical intentions technique. In paradoxical intentions, Viktor Frankl, uh, uh, he provoked his, his protagonist, his uh, clients to, uh, to cope with the fear, with the weaknesses, with the, with the vulnerabilities by the exaggeration of them and by imagining that they are having this problem in a maximized way. For example, if somebody was complaining, I'm so afraid to, to, to have a stroke today or to get a heart attack. So Frankel was advocating them. You have to go and imagine that today you are going to have a stroke and you are going to explode out of heart attack and, sh and, and even fall down on the, on the street and show it to, uh, to others. So when you maximize, you exaggerate the fears, you, 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 if when you do it at will voluntarily, you will lose the fear out of that and you become a friend of your fear and it's going to disappear or melt away little by little. Based on that, and Frankel was a very cognitive in, intellectual teacher, uh, uh, teacher took it to theater and, and, and clowning and humor. So for example, uh, in humor drama, uh, he, he was uh, uh, asking people come on stage and they had a different uh, uh, story associated with maybe shame, shameful experience they had in, in life or, fear, or, or uh, a guilty experience. They always felt guilt in, in their lives. Or maybe they had a rejection, maybe they had an addiction and they were asked to, to talk about this problem and try to justify the whys, why they have those uh, uh, vulnerabilities. And if there is somebody to blame, they, they, are, they were, they were uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, they, want, they needed to blame the, the, the other people who caused them these this, this, uh, vulnerabilities. So the, 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 the facilitator, was uh, getting into his client's shoes and aligning with them, uh, being their uh, diabolo advocatus, not judging them, but going with them. So they, they, they were instructed to go with their belief system, the old belief system, even if it didn't help them, but what they believed in it before. But together with that, a clownish intervention a, co a, a caricature was administered. For example, a person could talk about a shameful experience, the most shameful experience in his life, but oh, in the same time, he was gargling a glass of water, like me. <laughs> Sorry. He was gargling a, a, a sip of water, trying not to spill it and not to swallow it. And together with the water in the mouth, he was talking about something which was considered for themselves to be very tragic. So now the focus was shifted from the intellect, from the mental stories, from the turbulence. It was shifted to the corpus, 
through the somatic experience to the body, the person became very messy. The water in the mouth was spilled on the floor, maybe was spilled on their shirt, and the person started to laugh because of that situation. And when you laugh, you develop a sense of distance, mental and emotional distance. Now this tragic story was re-evaluated again as something less tragic, more humorous. And when humor is created, and we are talking about self-humor, not about the capacity of somebody to understand jokes about others, but I, I, there is a, a humor about, a sense of humor about my vulnerability. I'm in charge. I'm the captain. Then self-acceptance is their byproduct. I accept myself with the imperfection, with the vulnerability, because I learn how to divert the focus from the intellect, from this digging mind, from this digging, 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 all this mind, which that don't help us anymore. We call, that's why we call it a whirling mind, a turbulent mind to the body. La saggezza del corpo in Italian. The, the wisdom of body. You, and, and when you go to the body, then you can pass through catharsis. So this is beautiful about humor drama. We use, a, we, we built a caricature around a tragedy, then it becomes light. And we use all these tools of maximization and exaggeration of the poison. The same is administered in homeopathy medicine. Treat the th same with the same. Treat the same with the same similia, similibus, curentur in homeopathy. The same applies in humor drama. Instead of covering up, hiding, fighting the poison, I want it more, hey, then I become in charge. I do things voluntarily. Wow, then it's, I, I become whole with it. Wow. <laughs> as simple as it is. Um, I'm not sure if I would say it's simple. And, and on, that, on, on that note, in, 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 in some of your materials that I've looked at, I, I, I hear the, and see the phrase nonlinear methods being sure. used. What do you mean by nonlinear methods? This is something which is sometimes hard to explain. For me, linear, let's define the word linear. Linear is something which is based on mathematics, on calculation, on statistics, and more than it, what the majority of people, how they perceive things. When we look on the majority in the world, how they see things, they are the, they are the majority, they know better. How the institutions, how the authorities see things. Let's learn from them. This is linear. How I'm going to plan my life, how I'm going to plan my day with no improvisation, with no freedom, but according to my calculative mind, this is linear. The non-linear will be the opposite. Now, according to, to linear things, I do things which are within my comfort zone. They are well known. They were maybe scientifically proven by someone, by institutions. So I, 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 I push on that. It doesn't matter if it helps me or not helping me. Usually, most of people, till their, the, 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 the last day of their life, they will be pushing this full gas on neutral, obeying to the linear perceptions which were imposed on them by somebody who is an expert. However, when someone will realize, sometimes out of pain and despair and illness, that something which is linear within the comfort zone stopped to serve their, their, uh, their benefit, uh, stopped to serve their uh, goodness, stopped to serve their life, stopped to serve their existence. When they discover it and they see, wow, this linear uh, 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 behavior I'm having, it, it doesn't help me anymore. And I want to try to contradict it and do something new to improvise on a new set of codification. This, this, so they, they go on something which is mysterious, new, 
uh, and usually they contradict their old patterns of thinking and behavior. To do that, one should have the capacity to transcend beyond their own logic. And it means not it's not their own logic, it's the logic of the majority of others which were in force. They have to transcend beyond that logic, beyond that belief system, and set in the subconscious mind a new set of codes, codification. This will be a paradoxical and we will be aligned with one's unique logic. So there is the, the, the general logic of the other people, and there is my own unique logic, which is non-linear. It's mine, it can be different. So I do something new. I improvise a new solution. And if, it, if, if it's this solution don't help me, I will exclaim like in theater improv, I will exclaim again. And when I say again, I admit that the old pattern of action behavior stop to serve me, I try a new scene, a new acting out in my life, through my life. And, and I will improvise, I will do three, four times till something will pops up, but, and, and will be precise for me, but it will be very different from what others prescribed for me, that this is right for me. That's why this is non-linear. And there are very few people in the world who go very non-linear. Like I, I, I know about those people who, who can cure, their, cure themselves from terminal illnesses. They are very, very few, not statistically proven, but you can see in all of their stories, they go non-linear. They accept their illness as their best ally, the best friend. There is oh, no need to yeah. fight. Wow, there is no need to fight, but all the other people are fighting or covering up or hiding. But those ones say, my, my, my cancer is my friend. I'm going to stop to fight it. This is non-linear because the linear is to fight it, to kill the tumor, to administer chemotherapy, radiation, to do, you know, to, to fight. The non-linear will be to accept, to surrender, to see what I can learn from the, 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 the illness. Yes, how can I, uh, try different things to change in my life. How can I wait not to, not to react from emergency, but to react out of emerge and see. Emerge and see means mental and, and, and mental and emotional distance is generated. This is non-linear. The other one is linear. And the other one, as you see, is contradicted the old one. So, if the old patterns of thought thinking don't help us, let's contradict them, improvise our life. We become the captives. Okay. I mean, that's great. Um, before you talked about a clownish intervention, is that what I use in order to get into a non-linear way of seeing things or to find a non-linear approach? In humor drama. Thank you. But there is humor drama, there is the theater, there, there is the scene of humor drama, the work with one protagonist or with a group, and there is what you do in your life. Mm -hmm. In your life also you can improvise something new for yourself, how you be behave, how you act. And as I said, when you see, when you understand out of pain, Pain is very important out of despair that something doesn't serve you, you anymore. It that doesn't help you anymore in life, but it stacks you, it blocks you. You do something new. You move yourself. Motions change emotions. You're, you're, you're not fighting and you're stuck in the full gas or neutral because you will lose petrol, right? So it will be the same, you do something which is out of your intellect, it's beyond the intellect and you improvise your life. But to improvise your life, you should be able how to transcend beyond the old belief system. This is important. Transcend beyond fearlessly. It's very, very important that you do things fearlessly and doubtlessly. When you do things fearlessly and doubtlessly, it works. When there is a small doubt, the small doubt works. You are still in the old belief system, okay? So you, you do things fearlessly 
and doubtlessly and courageously. And this is very, very non nonlinear. You become actually here, you, you, you said cl clowning, yes. You become the, the, the fool. You become, uh, you, you develop the wisdom of fools because only the fools, and we're talking about the Joker from the tarot cards, the archetype, he doesn't care about past and future. If you look on the card of Alejandro Khodorovsky, there is a dog who is pushing the person to, uh, almost he's falling out of the rope down to the bottom. But, 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 but the, the clown, the fool is not afraid to go forward, to be in the abyss, to fall in. The, he's not afraid of, of the future. And also he is not imposed by the past. Is only in the present moment. The same happens in humor drama. In humor drama, when you, you when you take this this water in your mouth, you're in the present moment because you you gargle this water, you start to laugh out of that of this messy situation. You are in the present, and when and you are in the present with the tragedy in the back. Wow! So you 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 know you you have the distance. You accept it. You can laugh at your tragedy. Wow, that's beautiful. Now in life, the same. You want to become the clown of your life. To clown your life, it means that you, you always stay in the present. You're not in the past, not in the future, because you know it's, it's meaningless. We, we have no idea anyway what, what's going to be in the future. So why worry? Yeah. But it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. It requires the courage of practicing and go more and more to the somatic experience, to the, to the experience with the body, okay? Everything that you, you feel from the body, yeah, if, if, you, if, you, so if you feel your pain, your suffering, you sell it through the body, it's easier to pass through it, okay? You feel it fully. And when you feel it fully, you, can, you start to become the captain of the situation and you start to laugh as well. So it's, it's, it's better to, to solve things out through the body. This is what humor drama does. This is what gibberish improvisation, which is part of my work, also does. This is what my work with the immersion in the cold ice water does, is being with the body means that your mental part shuts down. Yeah. I mean, you talk about what you talk about in the context of emotional healing so many other people talk about in the context of spirituality. It, it, it seems to be the same thing. I guess it's the same thing in, in the end. I guess it's the same thing in the end. You know, it, it, the, the most important for me is to, how, how to live my life fearlessly and happily. And I, I, I came to realize that by covering up of emotions, holding them back or fighting them, it doesn't work out. The same is true is when there is a problem, I try to fight it. We fight the terrorism, we fight the coronavirus, we fight the cancer, we fight the, tra we fight the traffic accidents, all fail. But let's see what happens if we do the opposite. We accept things and we befriend with the illness. Okay, and uh, we are not afraid anymore of sadness. What's wrong with, with sadness? What's wrong with depression? What's wrong with that? It's part of us. The problem starts where we start to hide things. We start to cover them up and we start to fight them because when we fight them, we cover them up, they will last forever. And it, it, this doesn't work out. You can numb things. You numb the things, and you eliminate the symptoms, but they will stay forever and they will become stronger in the future. This is the linear, but what happens now if you face them at will, you play with them at will. You will remember that, that Char Charlie Chaplin had a great quote. He said that in order to laugh, a man should have this uh, capacity, this courage to take his pain and play with it. And when you play with your pain at will. It means voluntarily. You bring the pain and you face it at will. You add it out. And we do it through theater, through drama, through humor drama. You become in charge. 
and you become happy about what you have. It means that you accept yourself un unconditionally with the vulnerability, with the imperfection. I think it's spiritual. It is very, very spiritual. Yeah. What would you say is the significance of self-acceptance in this path of healing? <laughs> Self-acceptance is, yeah, is, is maybe the major keyword of this work. See, in the linear perception, we are taught and we are schooled to fight, to eliminate, to cover up, to hide. And if you have a vulnerability, you have the imperfection, you try to perfect the imperfection. And when you try to perfect the imperfection, for some people, they become even more clumsy. Like children, some children who are loved by the peers, they become more clumsy because they try to perfect their imperfection. They are loved by the peers, they try to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You go to a medical doctor, he gives you the solution. You go to psychologist, he admonishes you and give you, gives you the solution. Uh, different authorities will do the same. You go to the mentor, to some, some life coach. He may give you also a solution, what you should do. But nobody is listening to you. Nobody is agreeing with you. And we see this don't help. This don't help. In the, in the best case, you can eliminate the symptoms for a while. You know, you remember what happens with cancer? People do chemotherapy, they may recover, and after five years, the cancer comes back. So where is the healing? That's linear. They are, they are, they are healed for five years, but because they were fighting and they didn't solve the problem to the roots, the symptoms were eliminated, they were, were evaporated for a while, but not the cause of cancer. So it, 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 it doesn't work out. Because you didn't accept your, your, your problem. When you accept your problem, it requires that you stop fighting it or giving solutions to fix it. You don't need to, to get solutions to fix it. You should learn how to accept it and live with it and show it off and maximize it and tell to everybody that you have this vulnerability and that imperfection and in humor drama, we also exaggerate it. You know, when uh, Aliza Luzia from Kibbutz Afikim in Israel, she had her cancer, breast cancer came third time. It recurred the third time. This lady was 72 years young. She never knew about logotherapy. She never knew about Viktor Frankl. She never knew about paradoxical therapy or coaching. But two times she went for chemotherapy and radiation and she was healed. When she was 72 years young, the third time of breast cancer popped up. And she, she told to her physician, wait, I, I go, I'm going now to take a break because I want to think with myself how I'm going to react for uh, this new pr prognosis. Because they told her come for, therapy, for, come for allopathic interventions. She told to her husband, listen to that. She told to her husband, we have a daughter traveling and trekking in Nepal. Let's join her for three months. So she, together with her husband, who was 75 years young, they went to Nepal. While flying to Nepal, her mobile phone was switched off. Nobody from Israel could reach her. She administered unknowingly mental and emotional distance. So she was not mixed. She was not in the, in the mindset of emergency. Now her parasympathetic nervous system came to work, was active. She became more relaxed. She was in Nepal, not in Israel. Nobody could call her from the hospital. After three months, they were... They came all to Israel. All the family came back to Israel. And this lady decided one thing. She's not going to take the uh, allopathic protocol again. 
okay, she's going to do something new. It doesn't matter. She, she went for B venom therapy, whatever, it doesn't, it's not important. But also she was exclaiming, I'm going to grow up 1,000 tumors on my breast. This was unknowingly a paradoxical intention as described by Viktor Frankl. Exactly, exactly, precisely. So she became the friend of her cancer. They shook hands. And when they shook hands, she could allow healing, natural healing and the wisdom of body to heal. And she's still alive. This is self-acceptance. This is self-acceptance. You accept yourself as you are, not as you would like it to be, with the imperfection. You make peace with all parts of you. It will. And this is non-linear roads. How can we break our automatic patterns of behavior? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it takes ages. But first of all, awareness and mindfulness here is needed. Sometimes. Because in automatic patterns of behavior, you are mixed. You don't have this mental and emotional distance where you can monitor things and when you have the freedom of choice to see how you're going to react. You are like a small child who is beating the other children who beat them, or the small child needs to be strong by being aggressive or by being angry. A small child, a small daughter, a small son, whatever. It's a very automatic behavior, also like animals. But here, little by little, through experience, and where the experience is too much. Sometimes people are falling to their unfathot unfathotable, I don't know, despair, what, how to say, I maybe I didn't say it right. Unfathomable. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not English speaker. A dis existential despair, mm -hmm. very strong illness, tragedy. You see that there is no way to go, nowhere to go, you are in your bottom. And then you see that now you have the choice maybe to react differently, to contradict at will your old patterns of action from the despair, from the nowhere to go, from this abyss that you are there very deep, from the big trauma and you, you, you understand that it's whether you, 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 you're going to die or you're going to now to be taken care of by authorities, which is very traumatic. You say, oh, I'm going to take responsibility and authority on my life. And it will help you to contradict your old patterns of action and behavior. And you will exactly act differently exactly act differently. It means that next time when different external uh, adversities, suppresses of life will be imposed on you, you will react differently and you will have the whole distance, emotional and mental distance to take your choice freely you will decide how to, to act, okay? You won't be mixed. You will go beyond the intellect. But sometimes you really need to be very, very ill and sick and despaired in order to understand that the old patterns of automatic behavior don't help us anymore. Then you learn for different techniques. And as I said before, working with body on the body somatic level helps us to do a separation between the field of the brain, the mental hemisphere, the, le uh, the left hemisphere, the intellect and the emotions and the, the corpus. When you know how to take the linear 
this turbulent mind and throw it to the garbage, not listen to it. You stay with the emotion and the body, and then you are not mixed anymore. And when you are not mixed anymore, you can go also on, uh, on, on self-acceptance, okay? And you can sort, you know, you, you are not mixed anymore. Now you can, you, 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 you can react as you want, not as automatic. This is important. Okay. You, you use a fair amount of improvisation in your workshop. Say again. You use a fair amount of improvisation in your workshops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do you encourage people to make that real in their everyday lives? Okay. When you work on improv in theater, and when we use, of course, gibberish as a, as a basic technique, which helps people to be more improvisational and authentic and intuitive in the training, in the workshop for different exercise. You see, there is another value here, which comes, which is spontaneity, flow, fluidity or spontaneity. In the training, in the venue, indoors, you activate this part of the brain, the right hemisphere, which is responsible for intuition, flow, authenticity. And you train it, it's like a muscle, you train it for different exercises. So for example, I, 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 I were thinking today to give an example. We have this uh, uh, theater installation called the Gibberish Professor, Gibberish Hyde Park. So there is one person, He's a teacher in school. He gives a lecture about a field of expertise of him. Maybe he's a teacher from mathematics or history, whatever. He gives a lecture to students in gibberish. Meanwhile, some students are asking questions. Some will be throwing chalks on him. Some will be yawning. Some, some students will be making some paper airplanes in front of each other because they're very bored by the by the lesson that's that's about by the way what is schooling what is university and in this gibberish hyde park sometimes i want to break the routine of the scene and i will come hiding in i will take one participant who is the audience as a part of the students, I will take him out of the, the, the venue and I will tell him, now you come to the class, you are the Pope. He will be dressed as a Pope and you are going to intervene with the teacher as a Pope. Somebody came from the, the church. So he comes as a Pope to the class. Now the teacher must divert his focus from the students to the Pope who is coming to the class. It's non-linear and interact with the Pope in gibberish. So there is a new improvisation is done in the class, okay? After the pop is coming, I will take another participant out of the, out of the class. I will tell him, now you are the cleaner who comes to clean the, uh, the, uh, the room, the room of the class. And he will come as a cleaner to clean. Now the, 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 the cleaner is, in, in, is, in, is, uh, is uh, connect, connect, uh, contacting with the, with the pop and with the teacher, there is a new improv. Now you take those philosophies or those uh, elements in improv and you teach it to people to apply it in their life. They live their life and then there is a surprise coming tsunami, men plants and God laughs. This is a tsunami, this is, there, is, uh, there is a surprise. Now you have better skills, how to react to the tsunamis, to the surprises, because we don't have, we don't have any control upon the existential gibberish theater, which is happening daily. It's non-linear, it's surprising, it's chaotic but we have the freedom of choice how not to be condemned by them. 
and where we, we our right brain, right part of the brain, which is responsible responsible for flow, intuition, and intuitiveness, is active and it knows how to react despite the adversities and towards the adversities. And when you react out of improvisation, it means that you plan, God laughs, and you learn how to laugh with God, you become the master. You are not condemned by the tsunamis. You do some rewiring and you adjust to the new situation. Well, I guess in these uh, days of adversity, and, uh, oh, might oh, yeah. <laughs> Existential oh, yeah. gibberish. Uh, Existential gibberish theater cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, it's a cafe. To, we've got to know how to be flexible and to dance and to, uh, to dance and play. Yeah. yeah. And to expect and the unexpected. Um, to play with the unexpected. Yeah. yeah. Talk to me about uh, genetics and uh, epigenetics and how they relate to our comfort zone. And, uh, and lack of comfort zone. Oh yeah, that, 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 that is, thank you so much for the question. It's very, very important because people always ask me, so what is this epigenetics? Genetics is something which people believe it's unavoidable to change. It's in our DNA and you cannot change. So if somebody has born with a predisposition for cancer, so the linear uh, uh, recommendation will be every year, check up if you have a cancer or not. Do my mammography or check cancer, what, what organ it may be. Because of, you have a bad genetics. Oh, fear, fear. You have a fear. Woo, woo, woo. bad genetics. We start with the bad genetic. That's the perception based on fear. In epigenetics, we say, that also if you have a bad predisposition, negative predisposition, you still have the freedom of choice by doing different actions to postpone it or maybe not to let, let these genetics be expressed. It means that the illness will come. You have the choice, you are the master. But you should do different things, eat well, do fasting, whatever. Um, maybe not poison your bread with different thoughts, whatever. So when you administer that and you say, okay, I have the, the predisposition for the cancer, but I will boost up my immune system and I will do everything not to have it. And in the end, you're, the person is not going to have it. He's in the field of epigenetics. It means transcending beyond the genes. That's the literary uh, definition of epigenetic or epigenetics. Now, epigenetics based, uh, sorry, genetics based on fear and comfort, cozy and warm. It's the comfort zone. It's this li lim limited, li li it's the limitation, it's the boundaries. I'm not emerging out of the comfort zone. I'm not laughing, by the way. I'm there. I'm trying always to protect myself from the future. Fight or flight, freeze, protection, ambulance. I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be ill. I'm going to grow old, grow old, grow old. This illness, that illness, let's check. Let's, let's see what's wrong with my body today. Let's go to the doctor and ask what's wrong with my body. Maybe we are going to discover something. That's the genetics based on fear. I'm not judging the people who are there, not judging, but it's a fact to what happens. A little bit exaggerating. The epigenetics will be total different. It means that I'm going beyond the comfort zone. I expose myself at will to different stresses also, which is also nonlinear. So with, with, with ice water immersion, I expose myself at will to the cold and to the pain. So the pain become my, my friend. I can sit in the, in the ice water for one minute. This, the stress is coming in the beginning, but after one minute, the parasympathetic 
nervous system is coming to action and the cold is not cold anymore, I can sit another six, seven minutes. This is going beyond the comfort zone. This is epigenetics because I expose myself at will voluntarily to the discomfort, okay? And if there is something which ma ma makes me feel pain, emotional pain, I'm going to expose myself at will to the pain and then to be friend with it. It's also epigenetics, right? So epigenetics is, is anything where you let yourself at will be exposed to discomfort and you are the captain. And, and this is about epigenetics. You go beyond the genes. And when you expose yourself to this discomfort, to the vulnerability, to the poison, it's not threatening you anymore. You become the captain. So you, you see how it, it's related with, with, with the past questions you were asking me, okay? If a person has, 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 has a cancer, a predisposition, okay, I will expose myself at will to everything uh, which uh, uh, can cause some pain, some stress. So I, so when I face my stress at will, at will, I become more immune to stress. And if stress is a key factor for cancer and I become less stressed, so I have some control upon the genetics to get to, to, to let the cancer happen. I have some control. I have better immune system now. My body is, is, is stronger. My emotional system is stronger. My mental strong uh, system and uh, spiritual uh, system is stronger. So I'm the master. That's, epi uh, that's epigenetics for me. That's laughter. That's laughter. First question you ask me. It, it's like taking the brave decision to make well, to to make the choice to re-engineer ourselves. Um, it's about re-engineering ourselves and rewiring your ourselves, exactly. And it's our everything what that you do voluntarily, you become the captain. I mean, if you we we have a we have a, a, a theater improv installation that. We let people to be offended and offending at will. They learn how to be, how to be friend with the feeling of offense. Mm -hmm. So you become immune. And if tomorrow you, you go in the street and somebody will curse you and will, will, will tell you not a nice word, you don't take it so seriously anymore. And if somebody is going to tell you, you are a fucking idiot, you will say, I'm the most idiot in the world, and I'm going to I, I'm going to to act to, to show you my, my anchor about it. I'm the most idiot. So it's like judo, you become immune. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. It's wow. a new re-engineering. Yeah. So you're not condemned anymore. Paradoxical. Wow. This is a, been a, a, a mind-expanding conversation. <clears throat> <laughs> A real delight talking to you. Is, there, you any, is there anything else you'd like to share with the listeners before we finish today? I think that now uh, uh, in this time of uh, uh, big uh, fear, fear period, all this uh, uh, COVID uh, era, already two years, it's all about fear. And and we see very beautifully how the fear don't help us. As we fear more, as we try more to protect us, to put more shields, we see the full gas on neutral. The fear becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And we try, as we try not, not to live our life improvisingly, but so calculatively, so planningly, so logically, we see the opposite results. And maybe out of that, we can wake up and we say and admit humbly, oh, this fear don't help us. Let's see if we can live our life fearlessly. And to live ourselves fearlessly, it requires our capacity to transcend beyond the logic, to see that all old logical patterns of thinking, 
they don't help us anymore. Where there is fear and logic, it don't help us anymore, doesn't help us anymore. Let's contradict it. Can we contradict it at least for one day to live our life one day fearlessly, see what happens. We always can go back to fear if we want, but at least for one day, live your life differently. You know, you know, you um, give a full room, give a full room to, to something new. See what happens when you stop fighting. See what happens when you improvise your life. See what happens when you serve your own purpose for living and you not leave the purpose of living of your parents. But they, they, they wanted you to be, to become. You leave your own uh, meaning. You, you leave your meaning and purpose of living precisely where your, your heart opens up. You live your life with an open heart, not with a shrunk, squeezed heart. Because the, the shrunk, squeezed heart is the, the linear. It brings a lot of illnesses, mental illnesses and physical illnesses. But what happens when you do oppositely? Then, then, then you, you, you can cure many people. You can cure yourself when you, when you live your life intuitively, authentically, improvisingly. Right hemisphere is more acting, is more there, intuition, less fear. Of course, first thing, be friend with your fear. Accept it, face it, know it, know thyself. It's important. You, you cannot cover up the fear. First, you have to play with the fear, be there. I'm not saying ignore the fear. It's important to, to acknowledge it, but to be friend with it, to give it a hand, to be friend with your fear. But after you be friend with your fear, little by little, you are not, impo you are not condemned by it and you do something fearlessly. And the fear will be there, but less and less and less. Because now it's, it's the time of a lot of fear is around. A lot of fear, and I, I say I I I I, I say to, all, to to many people, uh, your linear perception is to uh, get more immunizations, injections, uh, uh, medicines against, but nobody thought of boosting up the vital forces, the upbeating forces of life, to boost up the immune system. That's the non-linear. It's the epigenetic. It's breaking beyond the rules and the laws. It, it's different. It's a little bit frightening. I, I need to, to, to work out on myself. I need to put myself at will out of my threshold to expose myself at will to the cold, to the pain, at will. It's frightening. It's better to stay in the comfort zone. But, but you stay in the comfort zone, you become sick, you become ill. It, it, why? 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 Why, why, why to push full gas on neutral always? The car will lose the petrol, do the opposite. Fill yourself with upbeating vital forces. Boost up the immune system and let the wisdom of body, la soggezza del corpo in Italian, I like this word, to, to do the work. And that's all. As simple as it, as it, it may be. <laughs> well, thank you, Alex. And welcome to Absurdistan. <laughs> we should acknowledge once we're not the, the life in Logistan, in Logistan, don't, uh, uh, you know, don't pay. It's not worth so much. Let's move to Absurdistan. I, I've renewed my visa to Absurdistan. You, you should renew, you, you renew your visa and have a passport as well in Absurdistan. And Absurdistan is about pre pre precision. <laughs> Glad to hear. Just do the opposite. Than the, than the old patterns. Do the opposite. See what happens. It, oh, it, if it doesn't work out, exclaim again. Let's do things again. But one day, being absurdistan. Word is absurd. It's it, it's existential theater of absurd. Why why we are stuck to being the logic? Man plants. God laughs. Learn how to laugh with God. Amen. 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 Have a beautiful day. And, uh, Have a beautiful day so much. Thank you so, so, so much. It was pleasure. a great and, uh, interview. And I think we managed to express some, uh, I don't know, wisdom or some suggestion or to share from the heart. And uh, really, let, let, let's keep to be precise in our lives.
this is very important and all the rest is not serving us <laughs> and to everyone who's listening i I'm, I'm sure you've enjoyed this as much as i have and uh let's hope we can do the same again something else new soon sure great thank you so much michael have a great day arrivederci, arrivederci. Bye -bye. Arrivederci.